The yep. story I want you to tell now is the story of how you were discovered. I know that your origins were quite meek, and now you have this very glamorous model lifestyle. So I just wanted you to tell me from the beginning how it all started. My hometown is called Nizhny Novgorod. I grew up um, with my little sister, Xana, who, um, who was born with uh, very deep autism and uh, severe autism. At the time, I spent all the time with my sister. When I went out, it was always with Oksana, and Oksana would, you know, she would be uh, sometimes very, uh, you know, she would pee and I would have to go back home to change her, everybody would laugh, you know, it was like, I mean, kids are kids, you know, so I was, uh, I always felt this, this shame, you know, uh, from, from, uh, from my, my peers and it was uh, quite difficult, so I definitely didn't feel pretty and my mom couldn't really work. She couldn't have a permanent work uh, having a, a child with disability and raising us alone. Uh, so she, at some point, got a job that was not a properly legal job in a properly legal sense to be a, a seller in the market for working for um, for another people who were working illegally. Basically, it's a little bit complicated. It's, it's 90s in got Russia. It. Got it at that time. So it's a very, very difficult, very, very challenging time in my country. So my mom did that for six months and then she realized she kind of learned the trade and what profit was made. And she said, well, why do I need to work for this guy? Maybe I can do it myself. And when she made enough, just enough to buy one box of apples, and I remember that box of apples really well because I went with her to buy that first bo box of apple. And then for that was me when I was 11 and we started our own business and it was business. I mean, it's a big word of <laughs> business, but it was in a sense a business. It was illegal, but she paid at the time police and mafia to basically leave her alone uh, and uh, a little bit of percentage of her profit. And uh, it became somehow legal in, uh, you know, in the black market. Sometimes we had incredible days when we could buy meat and we actually have a lot of food and whatever days were good. But then let's say a, a, a bad day would come when nobody would buy any, anything or a lot would be unsold and then things go bad because of course we didn't have a, um, a storage to keep it cool or any kind of ways to preserve these fruits. So the next day they would, a lot of them would perish and then we would basically be left with nothing. And my mother was in debt. That's why at some point I separated from my mom and I started my own business at age 15. So because I couldn't handle the pressure anymore, she constantly had like people knocking down her doors and it was a, a huge mess. Mm. Uh, started dating this boy when I was 16 and uh, he was a model. He told me, oh, you should come to my modeling school. So in Russia, you know, you actually pay to go to school, to modeling school. I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing you can imagine. I mean, what is, there's no such a thing as you need to learn how to pose <laughs> or how to walk. So he's like, come on, come on, you have to come with me. I'll pay for it. So he, he invited me and I went and I actually liked it. We learned poetry, very important for modeling, by the way, didn't you know? Uh, they taught you poetry at yes. your Russian modeling school? Yes, yes, we had to learn how to okay. read poetry, how to read okay. poems out loud. It's not a bad skill to have. Absolutely. I was very, very, very grateful Doesn't to Doesn't really help you modeling, school. but it's not a bad skill to have. <laughs> sure. And then one day there was a casting. So I, maybe I was in the school for three months and then there was a casting and I... Uh, I didn't want to go. I felt uh, embarrassed and they said, oh, you have to wear a mini skirt. I didn't have a mini skirt. I made myself, I sewed myself a mini skirt out of, I cut, I, at the time I cut a lot of my grandmother's clothes. <laughs> you cut your grandmother's clothes to wear yourself? To, yes, to make clothes for myself. Uh, because uh, my, my mom couldn't afford me any clothes and I really wanted to wear something new uh, sometimes 
And so I would take my grandmother's uh, stuff and cut them and remake them too, <laughs> to <laughs> very badly, <laughs> <laughs> but quite creatively, I must say. Uh, so um, yes, and, and I went to this casting and the casting was horrible. Why? Because all the girls had to line up uh, in wearing this, you know, mini skirts and very skimpy clothes. I refused to stand in the line. You can imagine. I can imagine. Uh, and uh, I, I kind of hid, the, just stood in the corner and watched what was happening. And then uh, someone came up to me and, and, uh, and took my picture. And there was uh, this guy called Alexei Vasilyev who found a lot of, a lot of girls like Olga Kurulenko who became the James Bond. Uh, I know Olga, yeah. Yes. And by the time I left my hometown, my mother was in debt. Our apartment was uh, um, lent to the bank and she owned something, she owed to mix of between mafia and uh, relatives and friends around $5,000. And then uh, when I first came uh, to Paris, uh, she was going to lose her apartment, so I asked my agent, Cyril Brule, to write me a check, and he did. To pay for your mom's apartment? To, for, he wrote me a check for $5,000. He saved my family, he saved me. It was not at all sure that I was going to become a, a supermodel, make, you know, a lot of money and that it all would be fine. He, he was that guy that just said, okay, fine, you know, you... What else would I would I say? You once told me this amazing story that when you flew from Moscow to Paris to start your career in fashion, they gave you food on the plane. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm going to say? About the food? Yeah. It was the best food you ever had. It was the, uh, by far, by, by far the best food I ever had. I remember just uh, before, of course, even getting to Paris, just thinking, what is this? It was, uh, of course, piece of camembert at the time in Air France economy. You got uh, this kind of quart of camembert. Uh, I have. <laughs> can you imagine my mouth watering from <laughs> Air France economy <laughs> flight? <laughs> Food. It's quite good. It's quite major. Uh, it was um, pasta with uh, kind of um, uh, ratatouille sauce, you know, just a vegetable. Um, a vegetable pasta, but of course at the time I never tried anything like it because we we ate pasta by itself um, it was just butter, uh, not even with cheese, we didn't even put cheese on it. There was a dessert as well that was unbelievable. Uh, uh, it was a, like a chocolate cake again I had many chocolate cakes, but I've never had like a brownie chocolate mm -hmm. yeah, cake, yeah. you know, it was just so unique to me, just really so chocolatey. <laughs> it's a very um, sweet story though that yes, anyway, most people yes. I think discard airplane food, but you thought it was the best meal you'd ever had. Well, you know, now I also don't like to eat <laughs> so much on the planes, <laughs> but... Um, so tell me it's going through your head when you're 17 years old, you've just been a fruit seller on the streets of a Russian town and you're coming to Paris to launch a career in the fashion world? Well, my, I, I remember so well being incredibly overjoyed of the fact that I can start from scratch. So you're a blank canvas. I'm a blank canvas, yes. I'm a blank canvas and now I can, I can tell my story um, in a in a way uh, to people who just take it very differently than you know people when I was telling about my sister no one no one uh, about my mom even about my 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 um, my childhood no one uh, people were compassionate they were not discussed by it and so it was a, a very different experience of course coming from a place uh, where I was mm, sort of living in this shame and stigma all my childhood. Uh. When you're a teenager and you're selling fruits on the streets, do you ever think that you will be living in Paris with five kids and have this completely different life? Is it even in the, the tip of your wildest fantasy? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I, 
I remember very clearly uh, thinking in school, we were uh, having English language uh, lessons, thinking uh, why on earth am I learning English? Because I will never get out of this country, this, this city, this street. I mean, this is it. This is my life. When you were first successful in fashion, what was the first extravagant thing that you bought yourself or bought your family or? I started straight away sending money back to my mom. I remember when I first brought back my first hundred dollars back to my mom and how she cried and she couldn't believe it because it was a lot of money for her at the time. And then uh, for myself, I remember, well, I, I think I was just went to my first uh, fashion week in Milan and um, as a reward, I bought myself Bottega Veneta bag. <laughs> <laughs> it was my first bag. And you probably still have it. I still Knowing have you, it. you know exactly <laughs> where it is in this house. I still have it, yes. That's such a sweet and touching story. And I'm so happy that you got on that plane to Paris. For anyone that's watching, what kind of advice would you give your 17-year-old self? Well, I would say that it's more about the journey, not about the goal, because you never know really where you end up being. And uh, it's really about building the relationship with people that you meet. Because again, this is what matters. It's what you take on with you in your next career, in, your, in the turn in your life. You're like stuck with me funny. now, yeah. Did that little girl in Russia think she'd be hanging out with me? She only knew. <laughs> I couldn't dream of it, darling. <laughs> Not true at all. All right. Like and subscribe. Yay! Like and subscribe. <laughs>